So to finally end our discussion on the electron transport chain, which was our final step of cellular respiration, we have to look at this term that we uh, ended our last video on, chemiosmosis. The electron transport chain and chemiosmosis combine to give us an explanation, or they both explain um, ATP synthesis in aerobic respiration. This process of chemiosmosis combining with an electron transport chain, those complexes that we talked about, and the NADH and FADH2 coming in and doing their thing, give us an explanation for how ATP is synthesized, how the majority of the ATP, because remember, cellular respiration, the whole goal of it was to not only break down glucose, but to get energy, an energy that our cells absolutely need and want all the time and do this every single second of every single day of our lives is ATP. And making ATP is the number one goal of the cell. So what do we do? We use ATP synthesis through chemiosmotic process. So let's see. Let's ask ourselves a couple of questions. Um, chemiosmosis, first let's ask where even is the electron transport chain? Just to recap, um, the electron transport chain is located on the inner mitochondrial membrane. Something you should remember. All of these facts that are about to be displayed are facts you should absolutely know because they summarize everything about the electron transport chain. So the electron transport chain is located there. Who are the major players of the electron transport chain? Obviously, these are the complexes. We have to say complexes 1, 2, 3, and 4. All these complexes play a role, and you should also figure out um, especially who's getting what from who. What I mean by this, who is accepting um, and who is transferring electrons from where and who are they sending them to. So who's getting what from who? Make sure you understand that question as well. And let's remember which of these are, in, are involved in the proton pump and making a proton pump. Only complex 1, 3, and 4 are involved in creating a proton gradient. Complex 2 is not involved in creating a proton gradient. And thus complex 2, you cannot say, is involved in the overall ATP synthase, the synthesis of um, cellular respiration. 1, 3, and 4 are the major players of proton gradients, uh, but 2 is also important because that's where we see FADH2 give up its electron. So, in addition to that, we also have to ask ourselves, what's the, what's the role of oxygen? And we'll get back to this actually a little bit later, also in more detail. The role of oxygen, of course, is the idea that it's actually simply there because it's going to be reduced to H2O from O2. Once again, reduction is gain. Remember oil rig. Oil rig. Oxidation is loss of electrons, reduction is gain of electrons. I said that oxygen is reduced to H2O. Reduction is gain. What has oxygen just gained if it turns into H2O? It has gained what? It has gained hydrogen. And that's what we're always talking about in the idea of cellular respiration. Uh, redox reactions is either gaining or losing hydrogen. And this is what's happened. It's gained hydrogen and it's turned into H2O. That's why when you look back at the cellular respiration equation, six um, molecules of H2O, six molecules of oxygen, excuse me, on the reactant side turn into six molecules of hydrogen, uh, of, excuse me, water on the product side. So that's our role of oxygen. It's reduced. In addition to that, um, is ATP produced from this process? And the answer is a resounding yes, absolutely. A lot of ATP, the majority of ATP, we'll even write that down, majority of ATP is produced from the electron transport chain and the chemiosmotic process. Um, what is the role of ATPase? We can ask ourselves to sort of uh, almost finish up this idea. What does ATPase do? Um, what's its role? It's basically considered the motor. It's the motor, it's literally the motor that drives um, ADP phosphorylation, if you want to be fancy. And what I mean by this is that this is the motor that drives ADP combining with PI, which is just an inorganic phosphate, to give us not two uh, phosphate groups, but now ATP, triphosphate, three phosphate groups. It's the motor that drives AT ADP phosphorylation. And simply, uh, we can say, in other words, it creates ATP, the ATP synthase uh, protein, via a proton gradient. 
And remember that proton gradient is established by complexes 1, 3, and 4 through the electron transport chain. And lastly, the most important thing possible um, about the electron transport chain is the idea of oxygen. Oxygen, we've talked about it briefly here, but sort of the dual role, the most important thing, and always, it's at least one exam question about this, oxygen is considered, and you have to remember it in this terminology, the terminal electron acceptor. Because if you go back into the notes and notice at the very end, what does complex 4 do? Who does it transfer um, its electron that came from cytochrome C? It transfers it to oxygen. And once it transfers it to oxygen, that catalyzes the reaction of O2 turning into H2O in that reduction format. Always remember that the reason we breathe, if we lose oxygen, if we are choking, let's say, if somebody is choking us, they are preventing our terminal electron from being accepted. And if our terminal electron is not accepted, if that final electron is not accepted in this whole down the line electron transport chain, you know what happens, right? We have a free electron. And if we have a free electron and it's not in a state of either reduction or oxidation, that is bad. We established that in our very first video on this lecture series. And if that is happening, you will die. This is why you need to breathe constantly. You need oxygen all the time because if you don't have it, you're not having anything to accept the terminal electron. Thus, you're not creating ATP. Thus, you're not going to live. Thus, you're going to cause free uh, electrons to roam. And that's a very, very bad problem. So this is a star. This is one of the most important things. It's a fact I will never forget in my life. Wake up every day and thank oxygen for being the terminal electron acceptor. So overall, now we understand what the electron transport chain is, how it relates to chemiosmosis. This is just the idea of, of chemically changing oxygen. That's why it's called chemiosmosis. What do we chemically change oxygen to? Obviously, we change it into H2O through all of these steps that we see here. In our final video, we'll summarize absolutely everything about cellular respiration, and I'll actually show you um, a very important chart, a link to a very important chart that I'll post on the site that's going to easily guide you through this entire lecture um, for the sake of simplicity.